Hey, welcome back. And today we're going to talk about this trapping ring order number two. We actually talked about the trapping ring order number one before by using either stack or two pointers. And let's go ahead and read the question for this one. Given eight M times N matrix of the positive integers representing the height of the each unit cell in the 2D elevation map, compute the volume of the water is able to trapping after raining. So let's check one of the example right here. So we have a 2D map and within this map, we have um, a whole bunch of cells. Each cell has a height. Uh, we're going to have a ring and after the ring, and we're going to calculate how much water we can store within this map, within this two grid map. And if you check this graph carefully, right? And after the ring and this, at this spot, it will not store any water. And the reason is that the boundary will not isolate those water right here. So it will flow away. And the water will slide away right here as well. And but we'll hold some water right here. It will hold some water right here as well. And because we have the boundary that higher than the internal height. So whenever we have the boundary that higher than internal height, and then we can hold some water. And and then the intuition is like we can start from the boundaries and we can start exploring and we can start crowding from the boundary to the inside. So whenever our boundary is higher than the inside cell, perfect. So we can store some water. And otherwise, in this case, so the boundary is lower than the inside cell. cell. Perfect. So the water will slide away. So we're going we're gonna to just hold any, uh, nothing. And so when we have the boundary right here, so this is lower. But when we start exploring the neighbors, right? This will become the new boundary because this is this guy is higher than this guy. So we don't need this guy anymore. We need this guy to hoard the water. So this will become the new boundary. But what this is one of one of the case, right? This is the case one. When the boundary is lower than the neighbors, the neighbor will become the new boundary. But what if you have the, the boundary is higher than its neighbors? And this will still stand long. This is still gonna be the boundary because this is high. If you are tall, you can still be the boundary. Okay, great. So uh, we're going to check one of the video, which I checked before. So this is very great. Um, I'm going to show you guys the video and this will bring up a lot of the intuition. So let's go ahead and check the video. So basically we have this graph and we are going to initialize the boundaries into our priority queue. So priority queue is uh, in Python is mean heap. And we're going to pop out the minimum value. We're going to pop out the minimum value. So we're going to deal with those smallest value first. And with those smallest value, we're, we're going to start exploring the neighbors. And if our value is lower than the neighbors, for example, this guy, right? we're going to start with this two. And this guy is lower than four, and the four will become the new boundary. Or we have other cases, something like, hey, this guy. So 12 is higher than two. So the 12 is still going to be the boundary because two is not gonna override 12. This is lower, and that's why this guy will still stand. So we have some two cases like this. And when we crowding from the outside to inside, when we start crowding from outside to inside, and when we see the lower value, so we can hold some value. So example is right here. So nine is higher than seven, perfect. So we can hold two value right here. We can hold two, two, two water right here. But in other cases, if this guy's lower than this guy, and that was the cases like here, this guy is lower than this guy, you're not going to hold any value right here. And that's the algorithm. So let's go ahead and visualize this. So we initialize everything into the heap and we pop out the minimum value, which is two. And then we start exploring the neighbors. And the neighbor is four, and this guy's lower than four. And this become the new boundary. And this guy is two. We explore the neighbor as well. This guy's lower than this. Perfect. We're not gonna we're not gonna hoard anything. Three doesn't have any neighbor, so we're gonna skip. And four has neighbor five. Higher than this guy, so this will become the new boundary. Let's come back to four. Oh, by the way, so each time we finish the processing, we're going to put the new height into our heap. So that's why our heap 
will still pop out four and four is higher than any other value on the boundary so that's why this guy is the new boundary and this will be popped out from the heap and start exploring the neighbor and this is 11. Uh, we're going to explore this guy if we check this guy carefully this is the boundary when we exploring to the inside we realize hey wait a minute so this guy is higher than this guy so then we can hoard one water we can store one water right here because four is the boundary and we're crowding to the inside and the inside is lower than this guy then we can store one value right here and we finish the processing for all the neighbors perfect and three become the new boundary three be, uh, three three or, so when this turned dark that means like we finished the processing but if you check right here right so what will be the boundary ac across this line it will be four actually three will not be the new boundary so I would, that's that was my mistake so four will still be the new boundary because four is higher than anyone else so we only track the maximum value so that's why four will still be the the boundary at this line okay we finished the processing uh, all the values are higher than this guy higher, higher than four so we're not going to store anything right there i think we got an idea so the idea is we only have two cases so either we have uh outside is lower than inside then we're not going to hold anything if inside is lower than outside we're going to hold some value inside is lower than outside we're going to sort hold some value and that that was the cases okay so and i think we can start writing some code uh yeah so this is more like a standard bfs um a little bit like dextra but slightly different so we're going to use priority queue in this case uh like we mentioned so let's go ahead and write the boundary first what, let me switch this value to nums just for easier typing and we put the length of the nums okay now we got a boundary and we need to define the priority queue and the priority queue is right here and uh we put all the directions Perfect. So now we can start doing the BFS, start exploring from the outside to inside. So before we do that, oh, you're right. Before we do that, so we need to put everything into the queue, do some initialization. So we loop through the M, the rows, and we loop through the columns. And we start checking if it's a binary. So if I is in a hash set, and we put uh, zero and a minus one right here. So that means like we are in the first row or the last row, or the J is in uh, zero or a minus one. That was means uh, we are in the first column or the last column. So if one of the case happens, and then we put, we push everything into the heap. We push the value into the heap. So what are the value we're gonna put into the heap? We, we're gonna put height. So height will be the first value. And we also put a boundary just to do the bfs for location wise and we're gonna have nums i and nums j will be equal to the reason i'm doing in this way is uh depends on your preference so in this case like i modified uh the input data so it depends on the people who ask you this question if they like you to save some spaces then you can do it in this way but if they like you to not modify the input data, and then you can do some visited stuff like that. that you can put a hash, hash set, or you know, like you can put the location, the coordinates into the hash set, just to do some memo stuff. So it depends on the personal preference. You can always modify this, and and then we can just start doing the BFS, and we can start popping out our nodes. So hip Q, hip pop, will oops, hip pop, we will start popping out from the heap and start with our initialized position so we put all the boundaries into our heap and just like the, the example right here we're going to start popping out the minimum value so what will be the minimum value it depends on what heap returns right so you will sort it by based on this guy and then when this value is equal and uh, we're going to start popping out 
the 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 minimum value from the next coordinates. But this guy doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter which the smallest value we start, as long as the smallest height, then we can start processing. And the way we're processing that is we're gonna do a iteration for all the directions. We're gonna check all the four directions for its neighbors, and then we calculate the new coordinates. The new coordinates will be uh, x equal to i plus dx and y equal to j plus d doi. So that was the x new new uh, row coordinates or column coordinates. So once we calculated the new coordinates and we check if the boundary is fit. Oops. So why I'm writing this or x greater or equal to m or y less than zero or y greater or equal to n. So we are checking if we are out of the boundary. So if you are across the line, so we can't do anything about it. So we're just going to skip. And in other cases, we have something like this. So we're going to check. So we have this as visited. So if you are already visited one spot, and then we just check if it's equal to negative one. So if we already finished the visiting, then we can continue as well. Perfect. So that'll be the next step. So the next step will be Let's go back. Uh, we, we check if the boundary is higher than the internal value, it, it's higher than the neighbor. If this guy is higher than this guy, and then we hoard some value. But on the opposite, so if, for example, here, so if this guy is slower than this guy, we are not going to get any value. And the way we do that is we, we take the maximum value between 0 and h which is the value we pop, pop out, and minus the new coordinates. If our boundary is higher than the neighbor, then we can hold some value. Otherwise, we return zero. We're not going to get negative value. So we save the if condition. So that makes the code uh, a little bit cleaner. And then we can do the next run. And we can hit push, push the value in. And we also have two cases when we push the new boundary. Right. So when we push a new boundary, we have two cases. Um, the first case is like this guy. Two is slower than this guy. Four will become the new boundary. Or the second case, when four exploring the three. Three is slower than this guy. So four is still going to be the boundary. So no matter what, we need the, the maximum value. So that's why we put max value or the nums x or y. Whoever is bigger, so we take the value. Uh, once we finish the maximum value, yeah, I think we are missing one parenthesis. So maximum value after maximum value. And we put the coordinates and then we can process that. So once we finish the processing, we record that we already finished processing. So we put that as negative one and eventually we just return the result. Let's check if this is correct. Oops, so we didn't initialize the result. Too bad. Okay. Okay, looks perfect. Okay, um, so just to recap our algorithm, so we are exploring from the outside the, the boundaries to the inside. So whenever we have the boundaries higher than the inside, then perfect, we can hold some value. And also we put this guy still as the boundary. If this guy's lower than inside, this guy's lower than inside, then what we do is we put this guy as the new boundary and we plus zero. And that there are only two conditions. And that, that's the only thing we need. And um, that's why we use heap to tracking the minimum value. And I think we finished this video. I'll see you guys in the next video then.